Welcome everybody to another Angelo Grosso podcast and uh, Happy New Year! I hope everyone had a good time. I myself got together with a very small group of friends and, uh, you know, everyone quarantined before and, you know, we made plans about this. So, you know, don't worry, don't get your knickers in a bunch or whatever that saying is. It was nice to see some of the people, not all, but some, most. <laughs> And yeah, hope everyone had a good time. Hope you got drunk. Hope you got fucked up. Maybe even I uh, got a little lucky. Maybe uh, maybe you got laid. Well, uh, you know, I hope so. I hope so. And uh, I think I was talking about this last podcast. I'm not big on New Year's resolutions. Uh, you should do resolutions all the time. Whenever you want to work on something, uh, just do it. Just do it. You know, I, I've had long-term goals that I have yet to achieve. I have had long and short-term goals that I have achieved and some that I haven't, you know. And uh, I think it's very healthy mentally and emotionally and uh, for those of you that need it uh, spiritually to have these long-term goals that you can keep working on through your resolutions. And if you have to use uh, New Year's resolutions to get shit done, just do it. You know, one of my long-term goals that I'm, I've am i been working on since college is my novel. But I got some other long-term ones uh, achieved the last couple of years, you know. Moved out of my parents' house, got a condo, bought a house, paid off my student loans, got a better job, got this house. I got this podcast going, I can keep going, you know. But it's good. Things are good. I'll tell you what's not good is figuring out what the fuck I'm going to call this podcast uh, I was going to settle on Burning Bridges. I was even get working on getting some art made for the Burning Bridges podcast. However, it has been taken. Uh, I thought it, that podcast was done, though, but I went back uh, just now before I started recording, and I see that they've pumped out a bunch more, so I can't call it that. So, I honestly, at this point, I'm thinking of just calling it uh, Angelo Grosso's podcast <laughs> or just the Angelo Grosso show or... Uh, I'm not really sure. I, I want to keep it uh, somewhat on the up and up of professionalism because soon enough I would like to interview people and I, and I don't think I would get much uh, respect if I say, oh, you know, my podcast is called Getting Blotto with Angelo or Getting, getting Dank Lit or something or some other ideas that we were joking around about getting litty with gritty, you know, stuff like that. And it, no, you gotta, you gotta be taken seriously sometimes. If I want to interview a doctors and shit, uh, I gotta have a, something, a, a nice name. I thought Burning Bridges was a good name, but I gotta work on it. I gotta work on it. So I'll ask the listening public here, all 12 of you, <laughs> send me your ideas for what we should call uh, this podcast. We could just call it the train wreck podcast. <laughs> In fact, let me see. Is that taken? Let's see. Train wreck. Oh, shit. It pre-filled it in, which means it's been taken. Yep. Train wreck podcast. Oh, there's a multiple ones. Train wrecks TV scuffed podcast. Well, you got to work on that name, motherfucker. That's bad. There's train wreck one word, train wreck two word. Eh, I know you're playing fucky fucky with each other. So anyhow, let's move on. Uh, the NFL playoffs, baby. The NFL playoffs are coming up, and it's been a wild, wild season. I think the season would have been crazy even without COVID and all the crazy shit that happened because of that. You know, teams not having enough quarterbacks or teams not having coaches, teams needing to reschedule games weeks later. You know, it just fucked everything up. There was also going to be a week 18 game, but they you know figured all that shit out. But at the end of the day... We have our six playoff games set for this weekend, and two other teams are on bye. That, of course, is the Aaron Rodgers-led Green Bay Packers, and we have on the AFC the, uh, who the fuck is the AFC? Is it the Chiefs? I think it is the Chiefs. Let me check. Yep, it's Patrick Mahomes' Chiefs. What can I say? Seahawks made it. We're playing the Rams again. This is the third time we've played them. Second time in three weeks. That is not the most crazy matchup. The Browns and the Steelers literally played on Sunday. And now they're going to play next Sunday. Back-to-back -back games. Uh, I think that's been done before. But it is pretty crazy. 
And it's, it's also a little crazier that they're both within the same division. Is there any other division games besides us and the Browns and Steelers? Nope, nope, nope. I'll tell you, there were some teams I was rooting for that didn't make it. Miami Dolphins. I'm a big fan of Tua Tagovailoa. I like uh, Brian Flores, that coach. That's a fun team. They have two first-round picks. They're going to be good. I think they're going to be the next Cleveland Brown team. They're going to just be young and up-and-coming. They're going. They have their quarterback. Uh, they have, well, I would say, a very good receiver in Jarvis Landry. I can't think of their tight end or any of their running backs. So they probably need to work on that. But they have a pretty decent defense. So I'm looking forward to that team in the, in the years coming up. Some surprises. I did not think the Chicago Bears would make it. I didn't think that the Colts would make it. And obviously, and honestly, a couple weeks ago, I didn't think the Ravens would make it. You know, Lamar Jackson was looking like shit really up until week 12, the reigning MVP. But anywho, the Seahawks took care of business, barely beating the 49ers. I don't understand why this team is just uh, fucking Jekyll and hiding it up. But we won. Didn't really matter that we won in terms of the playoff seedings because we were shooting for the number one seed, but the Packers and the Saints both won. So therefore the, the win just makes us stick with the number three. So let's talk picks. Who does your boy have this week? Well, starting with the first game Colts and the bills on Saturday morning, I'm going to have to pick the bills. The bills are my favorite AFC team. I'm pulling for them. I even, I'm pulling them over the Browns, and I'm pulling them over the Chiefs. No, I like the Chiefs, and I like the Browns. I even like the Titans and the Ravens. You know who I don't like? The fucking Steelers. Uh, the Colts, eh, if they were playing anybody else, maybe. I don't dislike the Colts. I don't dislike really any of these teams besides the Steelers. I'm glad the fucking Patriots aren't in it. Fuck you, Bill Belichick. Although, all teams really cheat. The only thing is the Patriots got caught cheating. Now, the Colts... You would, I would argue, cheated back in the Peyton Manning days with his old oh, bumfuck neck, and then they did a, a full tank season just, just so they could draft Andrew Luck. Uh, that's borderline cheating if you if you compare tanking to cheating, but eh, what are you going to do? Uh, so Colts, Bills, I'm taking the Bills. The next game is the Rams and Seahawks at Saturday afternoon. I, of course, am taking the Seahawks, baby! <laughs> I hope uh, Russell Wilson throws for at least 200 yards. <laughs> oh, I hope Jamal Adams is healthy. Uh, I think the bigger question mark is going to be Jaron Reed on that uh, defensive line of ours. I don't think we have a capable replacement for him. We have that young guy, Monet, but uh, the only Monet I know is Janelle. Wow. So, yeah, I'm picking the Seahawks on that one. And then Saturday evening, we have the Buccaneers at Washington. And what a huge upset it would be if the Washington uh, clusterfucks would beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Tom Brady in his first year in Tampa Bay. I am taking Tampa. However, if I had to pick an upset on Saturday, I'm picking the Washington bumfucks because I just don't see the Colts upsetting the Bills. And if the Rams beat Seattle, it's not really an upset. I think we're only a four-point favorite. Eh. It's not that it's not that uh, big of a favorite to consider to be a blowout if we lose by seven. You know what I'm saying? So that would be my upset on Saturday. Now Sunday's games a little bit a little bit boring to me. I think Saturday's got the fun games. The Ravens and Titans is going to be a fun game on Sunday. The only one. Well, you know what? I take that back. Both both days have their fun games. I am I'm rambling here. I, I'm trying I'm trying to start controversies, baby. So the Ravens and Titans. That's going to be a good game, I hope. I mean, it's a rematch of last year's game where Derrick Henry just plowed that Ravens team and knocked Lamar Jackson out in the first round. Or actually, I think they were the, the number one seed last year, so they knocked them out of the conference round, but it doesn't matter. Lamar Jackson's 0-2 in the playoffs, and he was the number one seed both years, I believe. So now this is his third season. This is the first time he's played in the first week of the playoffs on the road this time. So I'm going to pick the Ravens. I think Lamar Jackson is going to get his first victory, but I, I, I'm 50-50 on it. I really am. I'm 51-49. I like the Titans. I like Derrick Henry. I like Tannehill. I like Hollywood Brown. I like that defense. I like Mike Vrabel. Oh, if the Titans win, I won't be upset. 
but I'm pulling for the Ravens slightly only because I like the Ravens. I like their I like the the defense. I like the I like the Raven itself. I like purple and black. It's awesome. Go and Baltimore. Come on, the wire, baby. The, that that town needs a winner. So the second game on Sunday, I think this game is going to be a blowout. Is the Bears Saints? I, I I can't I can't imagine the Bears staying in this game at all. Uh, I think they may lose by 17. <laughs> it's going to be a blowout. If there's going to be a blowout in the playoffs, I think it's going to be the Saints Bears. I think the Bears have a better chance of being blown out than the than the Washington who was than the, over the Bucks. So. And the final game, Browns and Steelers. I'm so hoping that Cleveland curb stomps Pittsburgh. I loathe Pittsburgh. And I loathe Ben Roethlisberger with the hate of a thousand suns. So I hope, uh, what's that uh, motherfucker's name that's on all the commercials? Baker Mayfield. How does Baker Mayfield get all of the commercials? Really, there's no other quarterback that you can get on your fucking insurance or your fucking towel or whatever cleaning product commercial that Baker, I mean, Baker Mayfield's in like 20 commercials. I swear to God. How does he make, how does he go to practice? How does he have time to play on games? <laughs> you don't see Aaron Rodgers anymore. You don't see, you see Mahomes every now and then you're never going to see Lamar Jackson. That motherfucker cannot give an interview. That is, he is painful to listen to. You know, Russell Wilson, I love you, bro, but you're painful to listen to as well. You're too cheesy. You're like Urkel. Just, you know, come on. Be, if, if that's your, I feel like every time I hear Russell Wilson talk, he's pretending. Uh, Sierra, too. I've listened, I've been to a talk with Sierra, and uh, she's very funny. She's like a used car salesman. Who are these people? No wonder future left. Jeez. So I'm picking the Browns to win. So... And my, oh, my upset of Sunday would be the Bears over the Saints. I just cannot imagine the Bears staying in this game for longer than a quarter and a half. So, my uh, picks to click <laughs> are going to be the Bills over the Colts, Hawks over the Rams, Bucks over Washington, Ravens over the Titans, Saints over the Bears, and the Browns over the Steelers. So, I hope I go 6-0. In reality, I'm probably going to go 3-3. Three and three. There's some games I'm on the fence on. Those games, again, are the Ravens-Titans, Rams-Seahawks, and Browns-Steelers. Those are the ones I think are going to be the closest. Colts-Bills, I think the Colts are going to lose by 10. I think the Bucks are going to beat Washington by 13, 10 or 13. And the Bears and the Saints, Bears are going to be below 17 points, I tell you. Yeah, I can't wait, though. I cannot wait for the NFL playoffs. I have loved this season. The Seahawks have killed me. Like I said, they've taken 10 or 15 years off my life, but who gives a fuck? Those are the worst years of your life anyway. <laughs> but uh, let's keep plowing ahead. Let me tell you a little bit what's going on with the uh, weight loss challenge that I'm currently involved in. So it's bad news for the weight loss challenge. For the month of December, your boy here gained eight pounds oh i'm a fat fuck i know i know i know somehow i lost weight in november somehow with all of the thanksgiving stuff and all of the pre-christmas candy i somehow maintained my streak of losing weight a month now in november i only lost one and a half or one pound or one and a half pound and i barely lost weight so I wasn't like, uh, you know, I wasn't cocky, you know, I was pretty humbled, but, but I tell you the last two and a half weeks of December, I knew I was putting on weight. I could just tell whenever I would take my shirt off and look at myself in the mirror, I felt like I was vomiting out every hole in my body. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then the mirror would crack. <laughs> Oh God. And so, but it wasn't my, my worst fear. My worst fear is that I gained like 20, 30 pounds. Cause you know, I, I like to assume the worst. Uh, so seven pounds, I think is a pretty big number still for a month, but it's not something that I can't make up. So my goal for January is to get back to where I was in November. You know, you want to keep your goals as realistic as you can. 
Now, if I said I'm going to lose the seven pounds and another seven, I'm going to lose 14 pounds this month. That's pretty hard. That's pretty hard. And even if I went to fat fuck boot camp, that's a lot to ask. So instead, I'm going to set the bar a little lower, but more achievable is me losing the seven pounds again. What I'm going to start doing is weighing myself on a weekly basis instead of waiting for that dreaded first of the month for all of the all of us to uh, put our weights in. And, you know, I, I, I don't know if I ever really went into this. I'm sure I have. But, you know, this has been a five year struggle uh, for me. And I say only five years because if we're talking my weight overall, it, that's been a lifelong struggle. However, this, when I say this five year struggle, I don't even, you know, I don't like using the term struggle. I almost want to use like mm, metaphysical enlightenment maybe because it's almost like one day a light switch went on and my belief system and how to lose weight and how to live healthy was completely changed to what, and it, what has been working for me the last five years. But way back when, I lost my sister. She was a beautiful, beautiful person, uh, morbidly overweight, uh, kind of just gave up on life in a lot of ways. So when she passed and after the initial mourning phase was over, I kind of had a realization that that is worst case scenario of a life for me is to be her age. She was pretty young. Uh, when she passed, she was, I believe, either she was 40 or just turned 40. Yeah, I think she was 40. And I just said, if I'm her size and her mental state, her emotional state, all everything that I had tried helping her and tried and failed in a lot of ways, and there, there were some, you know, there was some victories here along the road, but overall, it was her life and her decisions. However, I didn't want to end up like that, was what I'm trying to say. So after the first year, year and a half or so, I started to really try to update my beliefs, my ideologies about dieting, nutrition, health, all those things. And I had to make the uncomfortable decision to admit that what I have been doing for most of my life hasn't worked. I have failed. And that is a hard thing for most people to accept that they are wrong in something. And it wasn't a short term process either. You know, these are things that I have been trying to do my whole waking life, lifting weights, doing um, protein shakes, taking whey protein supplement. There was a lot of things. But I was eating a lot of carbs, a lot of sugar. I was not sleeping correctly. I wasn't doing, now I know, the correct kind of exercise. LaFonda, you're interrupting a very personal moment here. Here, just get over here. I know. I know. You're worse than incels. I know. I know. You're worse than the people who uh, protect the vote. (laughs) Those fucking mooks. Oh, I didn't get to, I haven't even gotten to Trump and all that shit, but we'll come back to that Jamoke later. Anyway, what, uh, the cat uh, disrupted my train of thought. I was getting pretty emotional on you guys. What the fuck was I talking about? My sister, blah, 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 weight loss. Oh yeah. So after I admitted to myself that I was wrong and what I was told and taught and what I believed in was wrong. And I made multiple appointments over the next couple months with these nutritionists and doctors to try to figure this shit out. And that really was the first step to what's really been a revelation in my life, which is don't call it dieting because dieting implies an end date. And don't assume everybody loses weight the same way. Some people it truly is calorie counting. Some people it's not. Some people it's dairy. Some people it's uh, a diabetic issue. So there's a fatty liver is what I have which is a buildup of insulin because on both sides of my family, genetics, you fucker. I have diabetes in both sides of the family, which, you know, it wasn't hard for me to get a fatty liver because, you know, the snacks were made against me at birth. 
So it's not like bad, bad, but I have like a propensity for it later in life. So something I got to watch. And now that I'm saying this out loud, it may not be fatty liver. It may be something completely different, but I vaguely remember my doctor telling me three or four times in the last couple of years about a fatty liver. You know what I'll do, gang? I'll message my doctor. I'll get back to you. <laughs> so the reason I brought up the, the whole weight loss thing is it's a very common New Year's resolution is to lose weight. I want to lose weight. Most people want to lose weight. I mean, again, I can only tell you what's worked for me. But what I, but what I think I can guarantee is that the steps I took initially are, would work for everybody which is if you have struggled your entire life to stay, to stay consistent and to stay motivated to lose weight or you are motivated, you do have that drive to lose weight and you start losing weight, but then once it gets harder and harder and you start to see less and less results, you kind of have, you say, ah, fuck it, it's just not worth it. LaFonda, I am going to put you in a wood chipper if you don't stop. <laughs> I'm kidding, I love you, I know. So, all and so the first step really is to admit that you may not know what the fuck you're doing. You need to go to a professional, and I would even say multiple professionals. I went to three nutritionists because I wanted to get a consensus or the best I could. And that's where you're going to find your answers. For me, it was genetics. For me, it really got boiled down to carbs and sugar and the bad types of sugar that's in even healthy food such as fruit and rice uh because you know starch and all that shit potatoes motherfucker i love potatoes and bread not together although i bet there is a dish out there that involves potato and bread that is pretty dank uh anyway i'm getting sidetracked here so that's that's my uh opinion on that that is what i give you my lovely listeners if you're trying to lose weight this year and you just say, you know what, I've tried it so many years. It, the fucking slim fast, it doesn't work. You're going to have to try something different. And this year, admit defeat. Admit that you don't know what you're doing. Uh, lay on your sword and go to a nutritionist, expert, whatever you want to call it. Make sure they're accredited. Eh. Don't go to someone who's going to put like gemstones and rocks and crystals on your fat body and be like, oh, what you need to work on is your positive aura. That shit ain't going to work. Step one is admitting you don't know what the fuck you're doing and go to a licensed professional. Number two is then keeping a food journal. What the fuck do you eat every day? Not in terms of calories, but just so you have it in writing first. And then you could start writing the calories. You know, that's what I did. So yeah, that's what I recommend for those of you who give a fuck. <laughs> Oh boy, let's uh, let's keep this uh, train wrecker rolling here. So I said earlier about Trump and the election fraud that doesn't exist. You know, now it's come out on tape that he basically demanded to the Georgia Secretary of State that he find him 11,700 votes. Basically, you know, fudge the numbers. Just find me the votes. Oh, just do just massive illegal traitorous shit. And you know. Once you think Trump can't go any lower, he somehow finds a shovel that can just keep going through that bottom fucking hard rock dirt at the bottom. Because, you know, the deeper you go into a hole, the more you dig down to the earth, you know, the harder the shit gets. But this Trump shovel can just break through all that shit and he just keeps getting lower and lower. This is a traitorous offense to me. Uh, I think he should be impeached about this. This is this is a better idea for impeachment than the initial impeachment which I don't really remember what it was, but I think, was it about the Ukraine thing? Was it about the, uh, you know, uh, you do this and I'll give you your money that was already agreed to? Is that the impeachment thing? Because if that was the case, then that was a pretty good idea too. But there was no evidence. I, you know, I know, I don't remember. There's so much shit that happens in this Trump administration that was just awful, illegal, and dare I say, emotionally evil, that it's hard to look at Donald Trump's presidency without a bias of any kind. And that's what I have tried to do. I tried to see in four years of President Trump, 
What did he do that I personally like? What were some policies that he enacted that I can look at and say, well, that's actually a good thing. Regardless of who, who did it, it's a, still a good thing. And so I spent a couple hours looking through a couple um, pieces from accredited sites uh, like the Business Insider, the Atlantic. Um, there are some others out there, but those are the um, ones I can remember off the top of my head. And I wrote some down here. And I also wrote some down that I think are good, but I'm too stupid to know if they really are good. And I need someone who's smart to explain it to me. <laughs> An unbiased explanation. Someone that maybe from a snarky British person. I <laughs> uh, got a couple of those on there. So the following Donald Trump presidency achievements, accomplishments, whatever you want to call them, are ones that I agree with. Number one, and in no way am I ranking these in like level of importance or a level of how much I like them or whatever. This is just what I wrote down. So in no particular order, here's the first one, uh, the Space Force. <laughs> the Space Force and its heroic guardians. And uh, yeah, so we like to laugh at it because of whatever, whatever crazy name it is. And, you know, I, I just think it's a good idea to have uh, some kind of presence in space, the way that things are moving in this country or in the country and the world. It was part of the $738 billion defense bill, which is crazy, uh, insanely too much money. And let's see, here's some, here's some facts about the Space Force. It's the first new military service since the U.S. Air Force in 1947. Despite its name, the new branch has not been established to protect the planet from extraterrestrial threats, but instead is tasked with protecting the U.S. military's assets in space. Oh, let's see. Many of the details surrounding the Space Force must still be ironed out. In many ways, this new branch is simply a more centralized version of military missions in space that already exists from the Air Force, Army, and Navy. So some people think that because so many different branches were fucking around in space, they said, well, fuck it, let's just make another division. And uh, I don't think that's bad. How can you not like that? Or not, no, you don't have to like it. How can you disprove of it? Yeah, you could say the money could be better spent elsewhere. And that's a whole other conversation. And, and I would say our bloated military budget, yes, you could cut that fucker in by 25%. And you could still make the Space Force. But anyway, <clears throat> moving on. The First Step Act, which I think is the name for his prison reform. The First Step Act is the first legislative victory in years for prison reform advocates seeking to reform the criminal justice system. And this is per Business Insider. The bill passed with overwhelming bipartisan support in Congress, a rare thing these days. It often or it offers relatively modest changes to the federal prison system, but was praised as an important step forward by groups and activists seeking to end mass incarceration. The passage of the bill marked the first major. I already said that the bill overhauls certain federal sentencing laws, reducing mandatory minimum sentences for drug felonies and expanding early release programs. It also makes retroactive a 2010 federal sentencing law, reducing the sentencing disparity between crack and powder cocaine. The bill also aims to lower recidivism by offering more rehabilitation and job training opportunities, and it includes provisions intending to treat prisoners humanely, banning the shackling of pregnant inmates, halting the use of solitary confinement for most juvenile inmates. I wish they would get rid of all solitary confinement and mandating that prisoners be placed in facilities within 500 miles of their families. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. In fact, I would dare say that may be the best thing Trump did, but it's a baby step in the right direction because there's a lot of things he could have done more of, obviously. Uh, next, I would say opening up talks with North Korea. I don't know why so many were against this. 
I think it's a good idea to talk to all countries. I mean, Obama talked to Iran and no one blew their gaskets. And so now Trump talks to North Korea and every, it's the ending of all diplomacy and what I know. It legitimizes Kim Jong cunt. Well, guess what? He already was legitimized. He's the leader of a nation. He's an awful tyrant who should be, you know, boiled alive in. Hmm, what should be boiled alive in? He should be boiled alive in a cauldron that three witches are making a stew out of. That would be kind of funny. Um, what was I talking about? <laughs> oh, yeah, North Korea. Oh, it's good that he talked to him. Uh, I also like how Trump was playing really tough with China. And I'm just, I smoke way too much pot to really remember what was happening three years ago in politics relating to international policy regarding China tariffs. Um, but, you know, related to the China thing was uh, another positive was the 5G control. You know, this is what I pulled from the Atlantic here. Trump's campaign to build 5G networks on Western technology rather than Chinese technology was powered by abundant reason to secure the communications in the democratic countries from Chinese surveillance and even Chinese sabotage. And this is where the Atlantic gets a little, you know, a little biasy here. For once, Trump's motives were not narrowly nationalistic. The main alternative supplies to China's Huawei, 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 are Sweden's Ericsson and Finland's Nokia. A little history about Huawei. In 2018, Australia banned Huawei from its 5G networks. In June 2020, Canada and Singapore that they would rely on non-Chinese technology. The United Kingdom followed in July and even ordered the removal of Huawei components where they had already been installed. France barred Huawei the same month. In September, Germany tightened its review of the security risks posed by Chinese technology. So 5G is a rare case in which Trump's abrasive methods yielded results that might not have been achieved by a more emollient administration. Score one for him, and it's an important one. Now, again, you can see a little bit of bias there, but you know, he was, the guy that wrote this is right, David Fromm, and I like David Fromm a lot. He's one of the better journalists out there. Now, again, this is a, his opinion piece. So that's why he's getting a little wordy, you know, for those of for, the, for those conservatives. Meh, he sounds a little bit cunty. Meh. He sounds a little too woke for me. But the, the fact remains, China bad, China surveillance bad, Huawei bad, 5G in America good. So, another positive. Another good thing that uh, Donald Trump did was speeding generic drug approvals. In 2016, the Food and Drug Administration approved 73 new generic medications. That figure rose year by year through the Trump administration, reaching 107 in 2019. That same year, Congress passed new legislation that will bring more generics to market even faster in the future. The CREATES Act will allow generic drug makers to sue drug developers that withhold information needed to manufacture generics in a timely way once patent protection expires. Uh, that sounds good to me. Pharmaceutical companies did heroic work in 2020 by bringing coronavirus vaccines to market fast, but predatory pricing has shadowed the industry for many years. Faster approval of generics is only a step toward a solution. But a step it is, so kudos for that. Again, David Fromm, great journalist. I would uh, say that this generic drug approval thing is comparable to the prisoner form. There was a lot of good there. It could have gone a lot more. It could have went way further out to help way more people. However, step in the right direction. And lastly, and this one is going to be a little bit controversial for some people here, restoring due process on campuses. In 2011, the Obama administration issued new guidance to universities to guard against sexual harassment and sexual abuse. Good. That's a good thing. Many universities interpreted this guidance as a command to do away with due process protections in sexual assault cases. Many accused students lost such basic rights as knowledge of knowing the charges against them. Universities often saved money by appointing the same official to investigate accusations, determine guilt, and apply the punishment. Bad. Bad. Bad universities. Bad. 
Emily Yolf of the Atlantic in 2017 on the extreme unfairness universities often inflicted after the 2011 guidance. Courts agreed. Students were soon filing and winning lawsuits against universities for denying their due process rights. By one scholar's count, about 100 cases a year by the decade's end. The Trump Education Department has rescinded the 2011 guidance and reaffirmed that sexual misconduct accusations on campus must be dealt with using the same due process rules that apply everywhere else in American society. And that's it. That's it, people. How many count them? One, two, five things in four years that I like, that Donald Trump has done that I liked. And I named some that I didn't name here because after doing updated research, I, I put some of them in the I have no fucking clue idea. I still think they're good, but I need more information and I'm not too cocky to admit if I'm wrong. And so these are some of those. Repealing NAFTA. Now, NAFTA was an awful thing that Obama did. Or wait, not Obama. I think Clinton. Clinton did NAFTA. Did he do NAFTA? See, again, I need more information. I'm too stupid. Who did NAFTA? All righty. See? Good thing, because I was fucktarded. It was 1988. <laughs> so, maybe I was just buying into that stupid shit that Fox News and the conservatives were spouting back in the Obama years. Obama's killing us in NAFTA. So either way, uh, NAFTA is not good for the American working class. Now we have plenty of evidence to support that. However, uh, Trump kept getting praise for pulling us out of NAFTA, but then he basically put us right back in with a different NAFTA, basically with his name on it. So again, he it was good that he got rid of NAFTA. Bad that we got a new NAFTA. What is that? The Who song? The old bo new boss is as shitty as the new boss. So again, good and bad. Same thing with the TPP. I don't know enough about it. I it's a bad thing. It hurts the Amer it hurts the American working class. It only benefits the wealthy across all the nations involved. But again, I'm no economics advisor. I maybe I'm too stupid to know the benefits of the TPP for the American working class. I don't know. Uh, another one that I thought was good initially, but I had a change my mind and that's trump pulling us out of the who i'm now against that however it seemed right at the time and i praised him for it and then i got some new information i was like you know that's all well and good however i don't like how the who was handling the coronavirus and i don't like how the who handles china they basically bend over and do whatever china wants to do to them but the WHO is an important organization. <sighs> Again, it's tricky. It's an important organization that does a lot of good. A lot of good. It does more good than it does bad. So that's why I had to change course on it. I still don't like how they bow down to whatever China wants. Same thing the NBA does. Same thing Disney does. Same thing a lot of companies do. We bitch and complain about China. But then our corporations were like, yeah, fuck you, China. By the way, here's everything you want. <laughs> and lastly, I, I read a lot about this and I'm still on the fence about it is uh, Trump getting rid of the ISIS caliphate. Uh, I can't really praise anything that gets done in the Middle East because I don't even know why we're even there still. And I know if we leave, oh, it's going to be insane over there. It already is insane. But in case if you don't know what happened, let me just refresh your memory. The Obama administration launched an international coalition to destroy the redoubt of the Islamic State in August 2014. The anti-ISIS campaign scored victory after victory in 2015 and 2016. ISIS lost control of its last oil field in October 2016, destroying its economic basis. That same month, a coalition forces launched an offensive to retake Mosul, the last Iraqi city in ISIS's hands. I know, LaFonda, you support ISIS. I know. <laughs> the last city. Uh, well, you made me lose my spot. Oh, yeah. So they retook Mosul as well as the symbolically important Syrian town of Dabiq. Trump continued the anti-ISIS campaign in 2017 and 18. And it remained successful, culminating in a U.S. raid that killed the ISIS commander Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi in October 2019. ISIS still survives as an inspiration for terror attacks 
but the Obama-Trump operation put an end to ISIS's attempt to found a territorial state and destroyed its conventional military forces. So again, yes, those are it's good what we did against ISIS, but I still don't think we've learned our lesson. But again, I'm not a military expert. I know you all are confused by that, and you're I, you're surprised by that statement. Angela, how are you not a military expert? I just cannot believe that to destroy ISIS, part of this international coalition, I believe Al-Qaeda was involved. And I'm pretty sure Al-Qaeda was, was always our enemy. But the, like that old saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Is that the saying? The enemy of my enemy? Ah, whatever. You guys know what I'm trying to say. But it is going to bother me. What's the saying? The enemy of my enemy is my friend. I did get it right. Motherfucker. Why do I doubt you? Why do I doubt myself? Oh, let's see. One more thing about that Syrian thing here. Trump has at times falsely claimed that ISIS is totally defeated, embellishing the extent of the U.S. military success against the terrorist organization during his presidency. Though the terrorist group has lost its territory, the so-called caliphate, it's still estimated to have 18,000 fighters in Iraq and Syria. And yes, we did kill Abir Bakir al-Baghdadi, and he was the world's most wanted terrorist up to that point, and his death represented a major blow to the terrorist group. So again, I'm not uh, an expert enough to say if this is really great. It is good that you killed a bad guy, but again, you're still killing people over there and you're still making martyrs out of a lot of people and you're just still making enemies day by day. And you still have children growing up with uh, American drones, bombing schools and hospitals. And you're like, you're just trying to live your best motherfucking life. So at the end of the day, I give the Trump's presidency a solid F minus awful. He's arguably the worst president in American history, in my opinion. And I only say arguably because, again, I'd have to review some of the worst presidents and see how he holds up. The fact that it's January 4th as I record this and he's still trying to fuck up a Democratic election and how there's still Republicans that say, yeah, we'll, we'll go along with this. The biggest motherfuckers on that list are Ted Cruz and Hawley. I was just praising you, Hawley, and you stabbed me in the back. Why are you doing me so dirty like that? Why? And there's a bunch of other motherfuckers on there, but what are you going to do? What are you going to do? People are dumb. People are dumb. And voters will just look the other way. But anyhow, that wraps up the Trump's presidency. Tomorrow, we have the big Georgia Senate uh, runoff. Best case scenario, of course, for me is that the Democrats win both. Worst case scenario, they don't win either. I personally think they're going to go one-on-one. -on -one. I can't imagine Loeffler's going to win. That bitch is cray-cray. She's like, if Skeletor and Voldemort fucked, that would be their offspring. Now, Purdue, he needs to get uh, hit in the head with a shovel until he's all in the dirt. But he has the best chance of winning, in my opinion, in that I forget who he's running against. I, I'll be honest with you guys. I could look it up, but I'm uh, I'm uh, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs right now. I'm trying to kill this pin. I've been smoking this uh, cartridge for about a month now, I'm, and I'm done with it. I'm almost done. So um, I've been hitting it a few times recording it, and I am just, uh, whew, I'm orbiting Jupiter, baby. So I think we're going to wrap it up for tonight. We didn't get to Angelo's journal, but that's okay. There's, there's plenty of shit in there. Don't you worry. So I hope you all uh, love yourself. And uh, take care of yourself and uh, love others and treat others as you want to be treated and all that cool sounding stuff. On a happier note, um, what is happy? Oh, it's a new year. That's right. <laughs> oh, God. I better end it. I'm just rambling here. I love y'all. Take it easy. You know what? Even better. Take it sleazy.